Hello, or rather I should say bonjour from what is often dubbed the ugliest city in Europe, Charleroi in Belgium. Although I must say that this is an opinion I don't necessarily agree with. Anyway, you join me on the shuttle bus from Brussels South Charleroi Airport to Charleroi South Station. Although I think that Brussels South is a bit of a stretch of the imagination, as I'm pretty sure the airport is actually closer to France than it is to Brussels. Anyway, today we'll be heading up to actual Brussels, with Belgium's national operator SNCB or NMBS, depending on whether you speak French or Dutch. So, without further ado, let's get down to Gadi Sud and check it out. Well, it may often get a reputation as Europe's ugliest city, but ugly the station is definitely not. In fact, if you ignore all of the construction work that's going on here at the moment, I think it's really quite beautiful. Anyway, in terms of onward connections, in addition to the rather convenient shuttle bus to and from the airport, Charleroi Sud is also served by an array of local buses, as well as the Charleroi Metro. The main entrance brings you into this rather spacious booking hall. I must say, I'm absolutely loving the stained glass window above the departure boards. Now obviously it's in here you'll find ticket buying facilities which come in the form of self-service ticket machines, as well as a staff ticket office. However, I shan't be needing these today, as I bought my ticket up at the airport, but more on that in a bit. Down this passageway you'll find a few shops and eateries. To be honest, for a relatively small station, the selection offered here is actually pretty good. This is all the more useful as SNCB don't provide catering on pretty much any of their services. Anyway, we haven't got long here as our train will soon be departing, so it's time to head over to the platform just now. The train we'll be catching today is the 1005, which has a final destination of Antwerp. This is one of SNCB's intercity services. Now, one thing that I like regarding SNCB's ticketing is that tickets aren't fixed to any specific train, and in fact, it'll cost you the exact same whether you book 30 days or 30 seconds in advance of travel. Anyway, here's what will be taking us up to the Belgian capital today. M6 railway cars are being used here. These double-decker coaches are actually locomotive hauled and first entered service in 2001. Haulage is provided in the form of a Series 27 electric locomotive, which dates from the early to mid-1980s, giving our train a top speed of 160 km an hour, or 99 miles an hour. Now, I've booked a second class ticket for today's trip, and we'll be taking this train as far as Brussels Central Station. As it would turn out, the train was actually quite busy, and by the time we'd found a quiet enough coach, we had already departed Charleroi, so I guess this is my cue to quickly run over the route we'll be taking today. Our trip we'll see is heading north, via Nivelle and on to Brussels. Scheduled travel time today is just 59 minutes. Now that we're underway, I think it's time that we get better acquainted with the seats. Honestly, the legroom on the base of 4 is pretty tight, especially should you have someone sitting opposite you. By the window, you'll find this nice little table, under which is a litter bin. Window blinds are provided as standard, and coat hooks can also be found too. As for the seats themselves, yeah, they're pretty comfortable really, especially when you consider that you'll never be on one of these trains for more than two or three hours. The only thing that's really missing for me here are plug sockets, but otherwise top notch on the part of SNCB. As this is only a short journey, I waste no time in heading for a wander. Well, I must say, the window peering through to the locomotive is cleaner than the one on the NS International train that we took a look at last week, but only just. 
Anyway, the majority of the train is made up of second class seating, which, as you'd expect, is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration on both the upper and lower levels. The second carriage from the front is where you'll find facilities for wheelchair users, as well as people of reduced mobility. This includes an accessible toilet, as well as a number of sideways facing seats. In the next carriage, we find first class, although not that you would have known if I hadn't told you, as it's more or less identical to second class. In fact, I had originally accidentally sat down here, and I only realised that this was first class when I noticed the number ones on the doors that separates the saloon from the vestibule. As for luggage storage, the overhead racks are pretty useless due to their ridiculously small size, something I find to be a common problem on double-decker trains in Europe. As for the toilets, well, I was pleasantly surprised actually. All seem to be well stocked and relatively clean, so good work. Lastly, this may come as a bit of a surprise, but this train is actually not Wi-Fi enabled, although not too much of a problem, as I found phone signal to be pretty good for most of the trip. Anyway, we're now just pulling into the city of Nivelle, which is just shy of the halfway point in our trip. Despite having a fairly nice and extensive historic centre, many of the city's buildings are replicas or rebuilt versions of the originals due to the fact that the city centre was sadly pretty much reduced to rubble during the Second World War. A short time later, we arrive at Brian Le Loup, which, besides having a very cool name, is known for being where part of the famous Battle of Waterloo took place in 1815, with the town's church actually being used as a field hospital. Not long later, we find ourselves in the outskirts of Brussels, and fast approaching the end of our journey today. The sight of an impressive number of tracks can only mean one thing, that being that we are nearly at our first stop in the Belgian capital, in the form of Brussels Midi, Zoud or South Station, and indeed, a short time later, we arrive there. This is Brussels' main hub for international and high-speed trains, with services to neighbouring France, the Netherlands and Germany, as well as Eurostar services to the UK serving the station. There are also slower speed trains to neighbouring Luxembourg too. From here, it'll only be a few minutes until we arrive at our next and, for us, final stop of Brussels Central Station. Now, I've been left feeling really quite surprised by this journey, and in a good way. I think that these M6 coaches are a really solid option when it comes to travelling across Belgium. The seats are comfortable and the ride quality is smooth, and I don't think you can really ask for much more from a short to medium distance train. As for the cost of today's trip, well, my one-way second class ticket cost me €15.90, while a first class ticket would have cost €21.20. Both of these fares also include the shuttle bus from Charleroi Airport to Charleroi South Station. Personally, while not the cheapest, I don't think that's too bad value for money, especially considering that all tickets are fully flexible and don't require you to book them in advance. So, in my opinion at least, a surprisingly good and fairly decent value for money trip, but do let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments below. Anyway, my camera did then unfortunately have a bit of a malfunction, so you rejoin me just a short time later at Brussels Central Station, located in the heart of the Belgian capital, and where we've arrived on time at 11.04. Now, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and want to see more Belgian trains, then be sure to check out my review of SNCB's rather strange looking Class 96 EMU, a link to which can be found in the top right corner of the screen now, as well as in the description below. However, that's all from me this week. 
If you're new to the channel, then why not hit that subscribe button and notification bell, as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next Friday.